for uh, a brief introduction, though. So I'd like to introduce the first speaker of today, which is uh, Maria Grazia Gianmarinaro. She is an Italian judge. We have been working together uh, for the last 15 years, Maria Grazia, uh, where you actually back then you were, you were one of the key experts that were involved in, uh, in drafting the Council of Europe Convention um, against uh, trafficking human beings. Um, then Maria Grazia in 2006 joined the European Commission, the Director General for Justice, Freedom and Security in Brussels where she was responsible for uh, trafficking human beings and the sexual exploitation of children. And then in December 2009, uh, Maria Grazia was appointed at the, as the new OSC, Special Representative and Coordinator for Combating Trafficking in Human Beings. And uh, Maria Grazia, during your, your mandate, you have been very outspoken um, about the, the need for unconditional support uh, for traffic persons in order to really have a truly um, human rights based approach. And in your work, you also broaden the scope of the fight against uh, trafficking uh, on uh, towards like more preventive work, focusing, for instance, on, on decent working conditions and also social inclusion. And uh, Maria Grazia, in her past, but also current position, has been able to raise a relevant issue at a very, very high political level, including uh, the need for access to justice and effective remedies, including payment for compensation for trafficked persons, and now focusing specifically uh, with the issue of traffic in, in conflict situations. Um, Maria Grazia, I am delighted to give the floor to you. Thank you. So it's, uh, it's true that uh, we have been working together for um, you know, 15 years now. And uh, I'm very grateful for this, uh, for this invitation. Um, in fact, I'm very grateful to uh, ICMPD uh, for paving the way to a better understanding of this linkage that you are right has been uh, overlooked so far, uh, the linkage between trafficking and conflict. Uh, and in particular, uh, today we um, we focus on the Syrian conflict. Uh, Maria Grazia, yeah? uh, I am sorry to, to interrupt you. We would like to just kindly ask you to start your webcam. You have to enable your webcam all the participants can see you. Excellent. Now we can see you. Okay. Great. The floor okay, is yours. Was, uh, there was something missing in the procedure, but anyway. It's okay now. So um, I, I was saying that actually uh, it, it is a linkage uh, that is there, uh, unfortunately, not only uh, concerning the Syrian conflict, but um, recent uh, recent studies, including the ICMP study, uh, but also the IOM uh, recent report uh, on uh, trafficking and conflict and disasters, uh, uh, the report of Caritas Internationalis, all these pieces of work show that trafficking is not something that, you know, can happen. It is, a, it is not a mere possibility in uh, conflict situations and in post-conflict situations, but it is a direct consequence, something, something that happens on a regular basis. And if we think about this, uh, it is quite clear that that this that this happens and it happens uh, all the time why because of course in a situation in which instability the collapse of the rule of law uh, displacement of people that you know are deprived of any any um, you know um, social and family support um, all the um, Situations of uh, vulnerability, marginality, uh, marginality are exacerbated during conflict, and new uh, vulnerabilities emerge of people losing their job, losing their homes, etc. So all this situation is a situation. We, I would say, it is the perfect situation to be exploited by 
traffickers. And this, in fact, happens. Um, when we think about the, the Syrian war, we, say, we, we see that uh, trafficking flourishes in a way, um, in a way which is uh, visible. Uh, visible uh, and uh, uh, causes uh, um, enormous suffering. Um, first of all, I would like to, to, um, to focus only on four aspects, but I would like to say that these are not the only ones. The first aspect is uh, the situation of uh, sexual violence, uh, sexual slavery and sexual exploitation um, affecting women kidnapped by terrorist groups, armed groups, um, by ISIL, uh, by Boko Haram in, uh, in Africa, but ISIL has the same, uh, uh, the same modus operandi. Um, women kidnapped, women, women, for example, belonging to minorities, such as the Yazidi minority, but, but not only, uh, are kidnapped. Uh, some of them, uh, it seems that they are sold on the internet. Some of them are uh, at the disposal um, uh, for uh, for insiders. Um, seems that this modus operandi is becoming systemic uh, for um, Al Qaeda, for uh, uh, ISIL, uh, for their affiliates, uh, and. Uh, there are recent uh, recent uh, books, uh, publications, uh, testimonies uh, um, showing that the situation of this women is uh, really horrible. Um, I have read uh, recently um, a book uh, published by a journalist uh, uh, in Italy called the, the the Woman Soldier of the Caliphate. Uh, of course, you cannot be sure that 100% that everything is true because this is the testimony of a woman, not a victim, but a woman joining ISIL, joining her husband, uh, foreign fighters for, uh, for ISIL, and being part of the so-called uh, moral police, which means that they were those uh, um, luring uh, other women uh, on the internet to convince them to join. Um, pretending to be lovers, uh, and they uh, were in charge of controlling uh, sexual slaves. And uh, this woman, again, I cannot sure that uh, every word is true, uh, but she uh, reported that uh, some of some of the women implored her to to kill them. Uh, and they were uh, kept uh, in slavery, uh, completely naked, because uh, because there there have been cases of suicides. The the, the girls used uh, uh, sheep to commit suicide. So we are talking about something uh, something incredibly cruel. Uh, and uh, I was uh, uh, briefing the Security Council uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, and many delegations insisted on the idea that sexual exploitation, sexual slavery, sexual violence uh, is becoming, uh, of course, not only a gross uh, human rights violation, as uh, it is in any part of the world, but also a sort of tactic of war and terrorism. And this is, of course, uh, you know, the uh, aspect that is uh, uh, directly linked with the mandate of the Security Council and following uh, the U.S. presidential declaration of uh, December 2015. Now I think that the Security Council is uh, really thinking about establishing a, a true agenda uh, to prevent and combat trafficking uh, in uh, conflict situations. Um, Another aspect I would like to uh, mention is, is the situation of uh, women uh, in displaced families or uh, social uh, social communities. I visited Jordan um, recently. I had the opportunity to um, to meet people in camps, 
Uh, and I was uh, um, informed about the fact that uh, the situation of uh, the risk of uh, early marriages and uh, forced marriages is very high. Uh, of course, we cannot exclude that some uh, girls are really sold uh, by their relatives. Um, but in other cases, uh, this is rather sort of a negative mechanism of uh, coping with the situation of war and, and uh, displacement. In other words, uh, in good faith, uh, some parents think that it is better that their daughters are get married with a, a man that can uh, um, take them away from uh, the situation of uh, displacement, poverty, camps, uh, etc. But unfortunately, uh, I've heard also that there are um, men uh, coming from um, foreign countries, but also uh, men from Jordan, uh, going to the camps, uh, especially to uh, get married with, uh, with girls. Um, unfortunately, uh, the destiny of these girls uh, is not known, uh, but we have indications showing that some of them end up in uh, um, in uh, servile marriages, exploitative uh, marriages, uh, or in uh, forced prostitution. Um, because, of course, uh, uh, a situation of uh, uh, an arranged marriage with a foreign man uh, in a situation in which there is no possibility to have uh, uh, social and family, and family support can uh, very easily result. Uh, in, in, uh, in exploitation of uh, prostitution. Uh, and, of course, uh, this is also the case of uh, temporary, the so-called temporary marriages, uh, which want to give a sort of uh, appearance of uh, uh, legitimacy to a practice that, that is just uh, uh, forced prostitution, uh, forced prostitution and trafficking. The third uh, aspect is the situation of the Syrian refugees uh, not in camps. You, you know that uh, in countries that have had a generous policy uh, toward the Syrian, uh, Syrian refugees, uh, such as uh, Lebanon, uh, such as Jordan, uh, a minority of uh, refugees are in camps. The vast majority are spread in the uh, in the society. And uh, these society, societies are, um, after all, not very, not very affluent. Uh, some people uh, live uh, in, um, at, at the limit of uh, survival. And there are situations, I've heard about situations of people um, you know, ready to work for no salary in agriculture, for example, uh, just to have the opportunity to, to to be accommodated in a, in, a, in in a place in which they can uh, they can live they can uh, can stay. Um, uh, also, child labor is a um, an outcome a consequence of the situation of uh, displacement. Um, and of course, uh, I know very well that uh, these countries, uh, Jordan in particular, I, I have had the, the opportunity to know better that situation. Uh, Jordan uh, is uh, actually uh, welcoming uh, so many people, thousands of people. Uh, and uh, it is a country, it is not a rich country. Um, and of course, uh, this situation should be dealt with uh, with an approach of uh, um, shared responsibility at the international level. Uh, so I don't want to under, underestimate the difficulties, but I want also to say that sexual exploitation is there. Sexual exploitation of vulnerable people uh, is there, and uh, it, it will be there uh, if uh, uh, something uh, something very effective, uh, the, the, if the international community is not ready to do something very effective uh, in this field. And I go to the last point, last but absolutely not least, which is the situation, the vulnerability to trafficking of people fleeing 
uh, a conflict, uh, a conflict zone, a conflict situation. And of course, we see that uh, there are so many people dying uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. So many children uh, have lost their families. Um, the Italian public opinion has been uh, um, has been um, you know struck by the situation of these children uh, losing everything, losing their mothers, the the, 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 the entire family. Uh, at sea, some of them will be adopted uh, in Italy, but these are only a few cases of a situation that uh, is there uh, since uh, since a long time, and uh, unfortunately we cannot expect that this uh, that this will diminish. Uh, this is uh, this should be seen as a global humanitarian crisis, which means that every country should do their uh, role should play their role should play uh, should should uh, take their part of responsibility uh, and this uh, this uh, approach is not there unfortunately international cooperation failed mostly failed uh, at the european level and at the global level uh, but the destiny of uh, those surviving their perilous journey, and we have to think that uh, this journey has become more and more uh, expensive and hazardous. There are Syrian families um, selling whatever they, they, they have just to pay for the, for the travel. And what happens when they arrive in a transit country or in a, in a in a country in which they want to uh, establish themselves, uh, they are uh, completely, completely uh, vulnerable. Uh, they they have to survive. They, the, the whole family uh, needs to survive, and uh, they are in a situation in which they are ready to accept everything, to accept any uh, any proposal of work in any exploitative uh, exploitative condition. Uh, I have to say that here in Europe, uh, we don't have, still, we don't have the, the perception of this link. Uh, I was, uh, um, yesterday, um, I participated in a very important the judges' summit uh, under the, the leadership of uh, Papa Francesco, um, discussing, a two-day meeting, discussing uh, extensively anti-trafficking, anti-trafficking legislation, anti-trafficking jurisprudence. Uh, and uh, uh, these are, for sure, uh, people of good goodwill, uh, people uh, really uh, caring for uh, victims uh, and um, trying the best way to, um, to protect victims uh, and their rights during criminal proceedings. Still, it is not clear that people we will encounter, we will uh, have next to us, or we will uh, see as uh, as uh, victims in uh, in courtrooms could have, and more and more they will have a war, a conflict background, which means bombing, which means displacement, torture, uh, persecution. Um, so I think that uh, this uh, awareness uh, that you know we are talking about we are not talking about something distant, something uh, which does not affect uh, our life on a daily basis. We are talking about something that must be considered part of our uh, life, part of our landscape, and. Uh, um when we see this um this kind of um, tragedy uh this kind of uh, humanitarian crisis a global humanitarian crisis i repeat um we need to mobilize uh, um moral resources political legal but also moral resources i'm a uh, Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, I, I cannot understand actually the complete lack of uh, um, even human compassion in the words of uh, many politicians, uh, 
and, and in, in the behavior of uh, one FARC, I, I, I hope um, a minority of the public opinion in, uh, in European countries. Uh, of course, we need to activate energies, uh, energies of uh, uh, solidarity, uh, and see trafficking as it is uh, a social economic question, uh, economic issue, in which there are enormous interests involved, especially in the labor, uh, in the labor dimension, but as, as we have seen also in the sexual uh, exploitation uh, dimension. Uh, and therefore, uh, everybody has to play a role uh, to uh, ensure uh, uh, traffic persons' rights to prevent risks of trafficking and uh, to ensure uh, that our societies are more. So I have to deactivate the camera, I think. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Maria Grazia, for, for this uh, very good uh, um, uh, speech. I mean, you, you raised so many issues uh, related to, to these new situations of vulnerabilities and uh, marginalities, as you said. And I think these four aspects that you highlighted, you really uh, touched uh, the core of, of, of this issue. And uh, I particularly uh, also uh, would like to underline what you mentioned about uh, the international cooperation, both at the EU and, and global level, uh, and uh, the fact that uh, Sometimes there is a lack of, of human compassion, and there would be a need to uh, mobilize several uh, different resources. You talked about moral resources. Um, I, I think your, your presentation raised really many important um, uh, aspects that should be uh, further discussed. And unfortunately, Maria Grazia will have to leave us soon because of uh, other engagement. So, I would like to open the floor now for uh, the questions and answer session. Uh, we will be able to take three questions for, uh, for Maria Grazia if our uh, schedule allows it. So I would like to invite all the participants to uh, feel free to ask questions. Please, uh, on the top of your screen, as Elena explained to you, you see the raise hand button. So kindly uh, press it, uh, so it would be easier for me to see uh, who has a question. I will give you the floor. Um, I would like to ask you to very shortly introduce yourself uh, and try also to be concise in your question or intervention or, or comment. Um, so I'd like to open the questions and answers session. Um, if you have uh, any uh, uh, question regarding the technical details, please use the use also the chat function that I see is already quite active on the on the bottom uh, right side of the screen. So let's see if there are some hands raised. It looks either that the connection is very slow or uh, we have uh, many shy participants. <laughs> yes, I see one. Um, I have a, a weakness, which is my capacity in pronouncing names correctly, so I apologize already now for some misspelled or wrongly pronounced name. I see uh, Cleo uh, Mainike raise the hand, so please um, introduce yourself and uh, I will collect three questions and then give, give the floor to Maria Grazia. The floor is yours, Cleo. Hello? Um, Can yes, you hear me? I hear you very well. Very okay, well. awesome. Okay, awesome. Um, my name is Cleo, you pronounced it correctly. Um, I'm 
still a student. I'm doing a bachelor at the moment, and I'm writing my thesis on the connection between forced marriages and temporary marriages and human trafficking. So it's not directly um, related to conflict, but I was just wondering, because no one else raised their hand, um, if Mrs. Gianmarinaro um, could maybe tell me, because what I understood from what she said is that she sees temporary marriages generally as human trafficking, whether that whether she thinks that's the case or whether there are any lines she would draw, because um, I assume there are also some marriages which are concluded without the um, exploitation as an element. Yeah, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Cleo. Let's see if there is uh, another courageous participant uh, that would like to ask one more question to the UN Special Rapporteur on Trafficking. Um, so, if it's not the case, I would like to ask to Maria Grazia to, to answer the question to Cleo, and I might have one question for you <laughs> after, after you answer to Cleo. So, Maria Grazia, the, the floor is yours. Please activate your camera as well. And the mic, the microphone, we can't hear you. Does it work now? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you and see okay. you very well. Okay. Um, I was saying that we talk about trafficking when there is uh, an, an exploitation component uh, and at least abuse or violence or fraud. Uh, these are the, 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 the combination of elements that uh, you know, uh, um, make, make it possible to consider a case as a trafficking case from a legal point of view. In the case of temporary marriages, I would say that for what I have, uh, I have known uh, for, uh, concerning what I am aware of, uh, there is always an exploitation and abuse component uh, because the girl is married with uh, with a man uh, just for the time uh, the man decides to make use of the girl uh, for um, you know commercial sexual exploitation uh, or uh, to give others uh, access to the body of the girl for different reasons for example uh, in the case of foreign fighters, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, just a way to uh, it is a way to reward uh, and at the same time to uh, entice uh, other young men, other people to join a terrorist group. So in this case of temporary marriages, I would say that uh, an abusive and an exploitative component is always there. It is different for um, arranged marriages. Uh, that can result uh, in a, an exploitative situation or not. Uh, it depends on, uh, on uh, the situation and the intention uh, of, the, of the man uh, asking um, a girl in marriage. Uh, but the problem is that this girl has no possibility of uh, uh, protecting herself if something goes wrong. Uh, and this is the reason why uh, I've heard about uh, a good practice in uh, Jordanian camps, uh, which is uh, mm, you know which involves uh, UNHCR, um, the civil registration um, the government department, and the religious court, and uh, together they are, they are informing the families uh, about the risks, so they basically try to discourage the practice of, uh, especially of early marriages, um, and of course also uh, forced marriages uh, for sure, um, to make aware people that also arranged marriages in a situation which is, uh, which is a, a situation of the social uh, isolation can be particularly dangerous. 
and in any case, they um, register the marriage so that you know the, the situation of, of the of the person of the young woman can be uh, can be tracked, can be uh, ident identified um, in the uh, in the coming months. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, the destiny uh, would be completely of the girl would be completely unknown. So I would say that even though not all these situa situations amount to trafficking, there is a high high risk that they uh, end up in a situation, uh, result in a situation of exploitation. Elisa. Mm. Ask a question. Thank you, Maria Grazia. Um, I hope you can see and hear me. Uh, yes, I actually have two questions since I see that our participants are listening, but they are uh, shy in asking questions. Um, and you mentioned four main aspects of vulnerabilities and um, three main things are particularly relevant for, for women. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could maybe mention, also based on your recent visits to Jordan and other uh, countries in conflict, um, specific uh, uh, different factors that are specific, specifically contributing to vulnerabilities um, of children. So which kind of forms of child trafficking are uh, taking place? in countries in conflict. Thank you. Uh, please just enable your microphone as well. OK. Um, vulnerability of children is actually very, very high uh, in these situations. Uh, there, there are different, uh, of course, um, different um, you know, personal uh, and family and family factors. Uh, the, the situation of uh, isolated children, children uh, uh, losing their, uh, their relatives, their parents, their families in the war, of course, is the most, uh, the, you know, the, the most uh, dramatic. But, uh, there are other factors. Um, for example, in uh, uh, situations of displacement, um, it is very easy that children become the primary breadwinners for the whole family. Because for, for children, it is easier to, to work in the informal, uh, in the informal economy. Uh, and they are preferred. Uh, of course, for, for, for many reasons, uh, uh, but uh, not, uh, not, uh, uh, not surprisingly, because they can be paid much less than others. Uh, in these situations, the risk of uh, uh, child labor and uh, even the worst forms of child labor is very, is very present, is very, very significant. And this is concerns not only um, neighboring tr countries uh, where Syrian children are displaced with the, with the whole family, but very often children uh, on the move, traveling alone, and trying to reach uh, European countries through very very uh, dangerous 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 routes, and they find themselves uh, in situations in which they can they, they are exposed to any kind of exploitation. Be it sexual exploitation, labor exploitation, exploitation, imposed and organized begging, etc. Um, this is not uh, a, a situation only of children coming from conflict zones, because we, we know that, for example, there are uh, Egypt, many, many Egyptian children uh, traveling along uh, toward the EU countries. Uh, but it is also true that this can last, uh, this situation of vulnerability uh, can last after a conflict uh, very, very, very long, for a very long time. We see, uh, we still see uh, children traveling along, coming from uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, 
or uh, you know camps in uh, neighboring countries uh, traveling along trying to reset in time the, the hope is to resettle in time the whole family uh, in uh, in our uh, in our country preferably in uh, in uh, in a uh, country of the of the european union uh, and of course the challenge uh, the challenge is uh, is very high because uh, this uh, particular vulnerability is actually exploited by uh, by traf traffickers very often uh, i mm, take this opportunity to say that in Europe, and I saw that there are many mm, participants from uh, EU, European countries, in Europe uh, we, have, uh, um, we have a duty, we have a task, important duty, to um, promote, uh, of course, to promote, if possible, uh, more, um, uh, more, um, at least less restrictive migration policies because the migration policies of the of the uh, european countries are part of the problem uh, not part of the solution because they increase vulnerability to trafficking of uh, so many people uh, but more particularly uh, we should uh, we should uh, ask that in every reception center in every hotspot in every uh, point uh, in which uh, um, refugees uh, people fleeing conflict arrive uh, they spe specific procedure are established to assess international protection needs child protection uh, opportunities um, trafficking protection protection on the basis of the legislation on trafficking because so, so many people when they arrive have been already trafficked they have they are already in the hands of uh, traffickers and exploiters and uh, to assess risks of trafficking because even though they are not uh, traffic trafficked yet uh, the risk of uh, uh, falling prey of traf or traffickers uh, there in uh, uh, in uh, the country of arrival uh, is very very high so in, we should shift i think the attention concerning the linkage between trafficking and conflict should shift the attention on prevention and uh, we should find in cooperation with civil society organizations and unfortunately not all uh, the hotspot uh, reception centers administrative detention centers for migrants uh, allow civil society organizations to enter and to, uh, to talk with, uh, uh, with migrants and refugees, we should, fight, uh, we should fight for that because we need to assess uh, and, and to prevent, if possible, trafficking before uh, exploitation takes place. Thank you, thank you, Maria Grazia, for uh, for this uh, this observation. Uh, I fully agree with you. Um, actually, there is a consultation ongoing at the EU level uh, with uh, DG Home to provide input for the post 2016 uh, anti-trafficking strategy, and uh, different organisations have been asked to provide also input uh, to also the new, let's say, situation that Europe is facing, specifically related to migration flow. So um, we at ICPD have made exactly uh, a, a recommendation and a proposal that goes exactly in this direction that you just raised, uh, to assess the, the, the risk of trafficking um, in the hotspots and reception center among um, the refugees. Um, I have one more last question for you because I see that you are uh, you have to leave and uh, I don't see any um, hand uh, raised among the participants, which is maybe also a bit of final thought from your side uh, um, to, to conclude your, your participation here today. Um, you talk about the need uh, to mobilize uh, moral resources. Uh, and I would like to ask you, in your capacity as a UN Special Rapporteur, what would be your advice for uh, policymakers, for instance, um, to, um, to do more in this aspect? How they could mobilize more also, for instance, the public opinion to have a different and, and a more um, 
a better understanding of, uh, of, of human trafficking specifically linked to, to conflict and, and, uh, and crisis situation. Thank you, Maria Grazia. Does it work? Yes, you hear me? we see you and hear you well. Okay. Um, uh, you are touching upon a very, very sensitive, uh, sensitive issue. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in, uh, in uh, many countries, uh, you know, politics uh, is uh, failing, absolutely failing uh, in uh, playing a positive role in this, uh, in this landscape. Um, of course, uh, we know that uh, one part of the public opinion is, uh, is concerned, is, uh, uh, is worried. Uh, um, what politics, the, the, what uh, we can call uh, the high-level politics should play a, a positive role in the sense of showing that these people are not, uh, are not dangerous for uh, European, uh, European society. On the contrary, if we focus on trafficking risks, we show, and you know, politics should show, uh, that these people are at risk, they are at risk. So instead of uh, uh, fostering sort of uh, uh, obsession about uh, what we can lose uh, in uh, accepting, in uh, welcoming, um, people fleeing conflict, uh, of course, uh, you know, we should uh, understand uh, that we should help, we should uh, uh, prevent uh, from uh, trafficking, uh, trafficking from happening, uh, we should uh, ensure that uh, fair uh, uh, living and, um, and working conditions are, are, are in place for these people. So, in other words, there should be a complete shift. Uh, we, we should be able to overturn, um, you know, the approach concerning uh, migration and uh, and, um, and uh, refugee flows uh, in this uh, moment. Uh, unfortunately, this has been um, has become a very very politicized. Um, but I think that there are countries that are doing their uh, their best uh, more than others. And I think we should uh, we should uh, follow this uh, this example. Uh, I have to say, for example, that uh, you know the, the Italian um, the, the the role of the Italian uh, um, navy uh, is still very significant in uh, saving lives. Uh, again, uh, an international uh, an international uh, shared responsibility approach uh, should be stronger in this field and it should be stronger also in the field of relocating uh, um, people uh, fleeing conflict. It is uh, incredible that uh, an option which is the option of, uh, of hope uh, uh, is uh, completely disregarded when uh, everybody uh, could see can see that uh, this option would be the, the only uh, the only way out uh, if uh, we ourselves were in a situation in which uh, we can uh, um, become victim of a bombing uh, anytime. Uh, so I think that uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, idea uh, is what I um, evoked when I talked about moral resources. We should think that uh, everybody has been uh, uh, a migrant uh, in, in in some moment, uh, every country, every family uh, has um, known, uh, has uh, experienced uh, uh, war uh, and uh, migration, uh, and uh, it, it would be easy to think uh, what the aspirations and hopes were uh, in, uh, in 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 that uh, in that situation. And try to just to be uh, to have a solidaristic approach with people that are now in the same situation. Uh, 
I'm so sorry that I have to leave and I wish you a fruitful uh, and a successful continuation. Thank you. Maria Grazia, thank you very much. We really appreciate that you uh, took part in this webinar. Um, your contribution, as usual, has been extremely valuable. And um, I hope there will be the possibility to, to get in touch soon and also try to um, coordinate our work with your office in the future. Um, thank you very much and uh, hope to, to, to see you soon again, either via a webinar or a lot. <laughs> in a conference <laughs> around the world. Thank okay. you, Maria Grazia. Thanks a lot, and I'm sure that uh, we will have further opportunities to, to work together also with uh, the participants. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.